Hi, uh, this is Guy Manning from the uh, band Manning, based in the UK, and you're watching Live Prog. Can you feel the rain? The rain will come again. Can you feel the rain? The rain will come again. Base camp, 6,000 feet. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> like that. And with me, Mr. Guy Manning. Hi, hello. From the band Manning. Yes, funnily <laughs> enough. How did you come up with the name? Ah, uh, well. Yeah. Well, nice to meet you. Uh, and you, along the line. Finally, yes. Okay. Because, uh, we've been in touch uh, with email and everything. Many times, for a while. many times. And uh, the reviews have been very interesting to watch. Thank you very much. It was uh, very interesting uh, to listen for me. And, uh, well, to, to mention what you said in your last message, you found, you're winning me over. <laughs> well, I know you don't like the vocals that much, but I'm, I'm doing the best I can with what I've got. That's true, that's yeah. true. And, and i, I got to say, especially since, since Charlestown, um, I, I, I find that I really started to enjoy it. And it gives me also a good reason to visit the older albums as well. Yeah, I think you have to. I think it's one of those voices you either like or you don't. And you can either put up with it or you can't. Yeah. You know, it's like Peter Hamill, you know, people, it's marginalised, people love it or hate it. Yeah. And I think it's the same with me, but I don't think for the same reason. I think, you know, <laughs> I think he's a better singer than I am, but, uh, yeah. but you know, I think it's, once you've got past, if you can get past that, then mm -hmm. you've got a chance of enjoying the rest of it. Yeah, right. that's true. Um, oh, let, let's, let's go back to the, the, the last album, uh, mm -hmm. Margaret's Children, yeah. which is a, a sequel to Ancestry. It is. Um, why, why did you make a sequel? Because I could. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when I did Ancestry, as you know, we've had this conversation before, I think, yeah, online. I like to use concepts, I, mm -hmm. and I don't always, you can't always make a linear concept album. You can't always tell a story like Snow or Tommy, or you know, yeah. you can't always do that. So what I tend to do is I can use what I call a container mm -hmm. out, like Bilston House. Uh, each room has a song. Okay. Answers tree. Each family person has a song. So it's, it binds it together, mm -hmm. but each of the songs are uniquely individual. You know, there's no linear thematic links. You know? yeah. And when I did Ancestry, Tree, it was just interesting because at the time, you know, we created a, a real family tree, mm -hmm. as you know from Margaret's Children, yes. and that came out for Ancestry. Tree. And you could see the periods of time, and therefore, because of when they were, you got an idea for a story about, you know, the gunpowder plot, mm -hmm. or, or whatever, you know, happened around that time. And Ancestry was quite successful in that, as, as that sort of that conversation with the, with the family members. Yeah. And of course, so there were a lot more on them. And I thought, well, I don't want to do another one, you know, straight away. But a few years down the line, after Charles said, I'm thinking, well, what can I do? I've got some songs again. Yeah. What can I do with them? I thought, well, you know, I've got, I've got one that I've written about uh, tsunamis and ecological mm -hmm. concerns, which is a theme I've used quite a lot, you know, about yeah. ecology. What am I going to do with that? And I've got one about a, a despicable reverend who <laughs> takes the farmer's money. Okay. Well, well, well there's, there's, there's one's about somebody as a person. This one could be about the story as told through somebody. Hmm, people. Oh, well, we could go back to Ancestry. Tree. So I went back to the tree and I looked and said, yes, you know, Southern Ways could be David Logan, the father of Adam yeah. Logan, you know, and so forth. And then it left me saying, well, okay, I've got some other tunes and I've got one here around the time of Isaac Newton. That'd be an interesting story, especially if it's somebody that nobody's ever heard of, you know, mm -hmm. but he's a contemporary of and you're yeah. telling their story instead of his and he's running in parallel. So really, the answer is, as I said before, I did it because I could. Okay. I don't yeah. think there'll be an answers tree part three. <laughs> I mean, I think we've done it now, but yeah. it was just an interesting way of just looking at helping me to write because I can write tunes quite easily. But finding something to write about, which I think is interesting, is more difficult. Yeah. And uh, once I've got the character in my head, and I can understand them, I can write the lyrics. So it's a good writing vehicle for me to be able to, you know, use the historical references, the context, and say, well, let's write an interesting story set at the time of this or the First World War or whatever. Yeah. And it just helps me to write. Okay. And that's why I do it, because it makes it easy for me. <laughs> Uh, to, 
to, you know, create the whole it was uh, <laughs> tree. Yeah, it was. <laughs> we had to go back and check yeah, in, and check in, check yeah, in. Yeah, I mean, it's very detailed uh, when I noticed. Yeah, because it has to make sense. I mean, it has yeah. to work. You can't mm -hmm. have people whose sons are born, you know, before they are. And, you know, we have to check. You know, and we also had to decide that some lines in the tree would die out, some would carry on, how the names would change, mm -hmm. you know, and to make it. You know, rather than just pull a whole series of random names out, they change with, with a sort of one eye on how names do change. You know, yeah. like somebody's grandson takes their grandfather's middle name and, and then becomes maybe uses that as a surname. And so we went through all that quite interesting okay. investigation. The new Almondo, which is, which, which is <laughs> in the can, starting to be written now, is yeah. it's an interesting story, and we're going to have to do, I'm going to have to do a lot of work on that for the research part of it, which I think is quite interesting for what we do. Okay. So you're already working on a new album? I'm always working on a new <laughs> album. Always, OK. Yeah. Um, we're working on two, actually, at the moment. Uh, okay. One's going to be a new studio album, but there's no hurry for that, because I think after 12 albums, people are in no hurry for another one, really. I mean, <laughs> maybe it's time to take a break. Um, but that's got an interesting idea uh, behind it. Uh, we'll talk about that probably as, as it comes out. The other one is an opportunity to record. We, you know, we do... The big electric show that we're going to do downstairs with all the keyboards and everything. And we do a lot of, a much smaller show with just acoustic guitars and like unplugged. And it, that gives us a chance to play some of the songs that we don't do live, you know, some of the more introspective things from the earlier albums. Okay. You know, things that uh, would work acoustically, which is nicely, but don't have a place in the electric set. And we've done that successfully quite, you know, if we played the, you know, in Cambridge Rock Festival, play the acoustic yeah. set instead of the electric set, and it works really well. So I thought, well, you know, we've got a bit of time here, why don't we record it, you know, for posterity, record the acoustic set as a proper studio album, yeah. you know, rule is you can only put a part on that you could play live, you know, you can't play 15 keyboards, it's one guitar, one flute, yeah. two keyboards, one for each hand, and with those rules we're starting to build a studio album around the acoustic, which is just a bridging, okay. yeah. interesting way of just recording what we do, and it's nice to revisit some of the older songs that don't really get an outing, there's a lot yeah. of songs that never get played. Okay, that's an interesting idea. Yeah, it's, it's fun, it's fun for us, yeah. we thought. And are you, uh, well, you're on the road now. Mm. Um, um, so, uh, have you played in these parts before? No. <laughs> first but, uh, time? The first time in Europe. In fact, the only time we have actually left the UK is to go to Rossfest um, in 2010. Yeah. And most of the time we play the UK, and we don't play a lot there, because, to be perfectly honest, there isn't a lot of venues left that will put up with the type of music we try and inflict on people. Yeah. Um, you know, we could, we often have a joke that we would actually make more money if we became a tribute band of ourselves. <laughs> um, okay. So, you know, we're, we're not playing status quo numbers and we're not playing Steely Dan numbers, we're playing something which takes a bit more listening. So there's only really a few venues and you can't play them too often. If you play them continuously, you bore people. So you've got a, a sort of circuit of things you can do once a year. Yeah. Luckily this year we're playing, we're playing at Summer's End, which is always a great experience. Uh, we played there last time in 2006 with the acoustic band. Mm -hmm. This time we're bringing the full band in and doing a proper big set. And that's going to be great. Um, and we're obviously Andy's, Andy and I have got to finally got together to get, the, get our act together to get the two <laughs> bands on the road. I mean, yeah. it's great to be on the road with the Tangent. They are absolutely super red hot at the moment. Yeah. You know, I've seen them a lot lately and they're, okay. they're very good, <laughs> but they're very good. Um, that finally he's got a band where all four corners are covered. It's like utop Utopia. Yeah. Each instrument is covered by somebody who really knows what they're doing. You know, and he's not carrying anybody. He's just playing what he does and, yeah. and Luke is playing what he does and Dan is playing and Tony W. He does. And it's a band where the four of them, you know, really do yeah. can excel. That's true. You know, and uh, it, I think you're in for a treat, really. I'm looking forward to that. But they are good. I'm, I'm looking forward to hear you play as well because you outnumber them. Two, two to one. Well, we had to do something. It's all about getting meal tickets for the restaurant of the road, really. No, it's just, I wanted to do a different experience for, mm -hmm. for what we do. And we are, we don't play in the same style. The Tangent is very much um, a band based on good songwriting, but also the virtuosity. And mm -hmm. there's a lot of solo spaces. There's quite a lot. It's quite, I find the Tangent to be quite fusion -y places where they can go into a sort of nice back beat and the guitar yeah. will take you somewhere and then the keyboards will take over and go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. so you're, you're thinking tangents or return to forever, you know, it's this sort of, yeah. we don't do that. Ours are a very, by, by comparison, very simple songs mm -hmm. made complicated by almost like a mini orchestra arrangement yeah. with many different instruments playing things which, so you'll have cellos, oboes, flutes, 
playing together. Um, so it's a different type of experience. So you need a lot of people to be able to pull it off, yeah. unless you grow an extra pair of hands, and I don't plan to do that any time soon. Um, so we are a different experience, and I think that's what these shows are quite nice mm -hmm. because you get the sort of the song, sort of song based, far more sort of singer songwritery songs yeah. with, with a sort of large scale symphonic arrangement, and then the tangent come and blow us off basically <laughs> <laughs> by playing really brilliantly. Yeah, you know? and it's a uh, so for anybody seeing these shows, it's been a bit of a treat. We've certainly enjoyed it, you know, the experience of it. Yeah. And they've given us, they've played here before and we haven't, and it's been an experience to sort of come and, you know, help them out and them to help us and we help them. Yeah. Them That's uh, good. So. You know, yeah. we've gone off and just decided to diverge. And we may come back and do something together, but when we're ready, you know, yeah. we're off exploring our own heads at the moment, I think. Yeah, yeah, I had a, a chat with, uh, with Andy uh, earlier on, and um, well, of course I mentioned the fact that you used to be uh, a part of the tension, and, and he mentioned that you, you were part of the first six albums. Yeah, the only album I'm not on, well, the only album, Al Cedo album I'm not on is Cotton, and the only other piece I'm not on, of course, is is a, well, there's Pyramids and Stars, which is the mm -hmm. first book they're going to, and going off on two. Everything else, the first five studio albums and going off on one. I was, yeah. I was there hogging the stage with my big fat frame. So, uh, yes, I've been, I've been actively involved in the, in the tangent. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they're doing a sort of more sort of acoustic instruments with the yeah. bazooki and acoustic guitar. I'm working a lot on the back of the vocal arrangements and things mm -hmm. I'm working on with Andy behind the scenes really, yeah. not virtually out there doing the thing, you know, because of, let's face it, there's a lot of better, better players than yeah. me out there, to be perfectly honest. Mm -hmm. And uh, I do, I think my, my input is more to do with listening to how things, sounds work together and constructing tapestries of arrangements, yeah. uh, rather than, you know, playing my acoustic guitar like Al Dimiola, you know, I just mm -hmm. don't do it. Yeah. Can't do it. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's no problem there. Um, I, I noticed that on, on, uh, on Margaret Schulen there were well, a couple of uh, guest musicians. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Is, is it how you, you manage that to do that in a live setting? Um, well, we haven't been able to get them across in a live setting because um, the thing is, I, as you know, I like working with a, a large variety of instruments. Yeah. I say it's more like an orchestra than a band, mm -hmm. and I haven't got a saxophonist. We used to have Laura, Laura Fowles used to be our saxophonist, but now she's going off and actually making some money, you know, by doing her own thing in her jazz albums and mm -hmm. playing Ibiza and stuff. Yeah. So, for the last two albums of Charlestown, we had to find somebody who, who would maybe enjoy the experience and not expect a lot of money out of it, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. And for the first one, we had this lady called Alison Diamond, she came in to do Charlestown, very nice, but then she had an operation, so she couldn't do this one. And I was looking around for a sax player, and Sean Gordon, who was the head of Frog Rock Records mm -hmm. suggested Marek Arnold because they'd been working and he'd done some sessions with them. He said, Try Marek, I'll send you an email. Marek, this is a guy, guy, this is Marek. And I said, Well, all right, um, can you, would you mind doing some stuff? Well, uh, he says, Well, I'm normally a keyboard player, but I do play a bit of wind instruments. I went, like, oh, Okay, and, you know, thinking, mm, okay. I said, Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll send you something to start with. See, here you go. There's a song called uh, A Night of the Savoy 1933, where I'd like a sort of Benny Goodman clarinet solo in the middle. Yeah. Can you play the clarinet? Yes, I can play a bit of clarinet, but I'm not good at that on those keyboards. Okay, well, let's hear how your clarinet goes. So <laughs> I sent it away, and he said, I'll send you a wave back, and we use Dropbox, and send yeah. it, you know, I never met him. <laughs> so yeah. this thing dropped into the Dropbox, and I'm thinking, oh, I'll go down the studio and plonk it in and see if it works. And, so I'd set it up so I knew how we were going to record it and I just took his pretty track, threw his wave in there, put a bit of reverb on it and just sat back and I go, let's see what it's like then. And he played, this thing played, and I went, oh, right, and I'm on the phone, I'm sending you the rest of the album now, here's, here's all the other songs, just play anything you like, saxophones, you know, anything you want, play whatever you like, send it across. And he sent this massive of stuff and I couldn't use all of it because it was just too much, yeah. but he, he's great. 
And if, it, if it's better on the keyboard, I've got to see that keyboard play because that sax playing was really, really good. Yeah. And Kathy played the cello as she did on Charlestown because she, she's local and mm -hmm. she likes to do it and doesn't mind not getting paid much for it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so Jen, and, and then I, I was looking for an intro, somebody to be the compare mm -hmm. at the Savoy. And I had to run a little competition, you know, sort of send me in a, a ladies and gentlemen, Miss Harriet Horton, you know. And I had loads of people sending it in, you know, in all different accents and things. Yeah. And then I got one from Fido in America saying, it's a bit cheeky, but you know he he really likes the albums, and I like his. So it's been a bit, a bit of mutual. It's, you yeah. know, sort of, I love your stuff. Oh, I love your stuff too. And he sent me this thing in. It was only great. So I guess yeah. easier. Of course, I can then say you know featuring Fido on it, and I might sell some more records because he sells far more than I do. But he did this little guest spot. So yeah, I use I use people where my skill set is not. Uh, I'm not able to do it myself. Mm -hmm. There's nobody I can call on. So I'll call on whoever I want. And and uh, Leon Camfield from Tiny Fish came and did percussion yeah. for us. We had a great weekend. He, he started off on congas and things and whistles, and then he went on the kitchen utensils. He was hitting spatulas and <laughs> pots up to you know clanging away and okay. making some very interesting noises. And we've used all of it really. So we had a great time. So the idea is, can you find somebody who makes the, the song better outside yeah. of me? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are plenty of people who can play better than me. So I'll ask them, and if they're interested, they'll have yeah. a go. And, uh, I try to make it as an enjoyable experience as I can, and hopefully I'll continue to do that. So that's yeah. why I use guests. It's cheap. Oh, did I really say that? Um, it's, <laughs> it's, they bring something that I can't bring. Yeah. An extra flavour to it. Yeah. All these little bits uh, well, make it all uh, well, a very interesting listening experience. Well, things like Black Six Silk Sheets of Cairo, or well, like Eastern mm -hmm. feel, wouldn't be the same without his, his saxophones yeah. doing that sort of soprano saxophone bit. I mean, he's wonderful. That's true. And it sets the whole scene up yeah. for that, that Egypt story. So, you know, it's very important to get the right instruments in the right place in the right context. Of course, yeah. Mm, he's good. Okay. Well, um, I want to thank you. No. It was very nice to chat with you. Thank you. And uh, very interesting to hear a little bit more about uh, the music. Yeah, uh, uh, I, I look forward to seeing you on stage. Well, uh, <laughs> let's, let's hope I can deliver the goods, folks. <laughs> Otherwise, we won't be having this part two of this interview. So, um, we hope to play okay. <laughs> yeah. We're up against stiff competition, though. You, know. <laughs> you won't remember that in the tent, but, but uh, yes. thanks for all the support. For all the help in bringing our music to the attention of a wide world, so it's very much appreciated. Of course, it's my pleasure. No, it's my pleasure. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>